Hey guys, and welcome back to my channel, and welcome to my channel if you're new here. And this bike is my Aerial Rider Grizzly. So I'm going to finally get to go over all the mods I did and a little about this bike. So as you guys know and follow my other video, I recently in November of 2021 picked up a Rad Rover 6 Plus from Rad Power Bikes to go fishing and upon riding that I wanted something that would handle the hills on the North Shore a little better around here. So I opted to go with this Aerial Rider Grizzly. What's really unique about this bike is it has number one dual batteries. So it has a 20 amp hour battery in the back here and it has a 15 amp hour battery in the front here. And these batteries are 52 volts. They're a little higher voltage than the standard 48 volt e-bike battery. What's also neat about this bike is it does have full suspension. It does have a dual spring shock suspension in the back. And along with that, it does come with folding pegs for an optional second passenger to ride. What's also pretty neat is they do have a extended saddle option, but they're mostly out of stock. So I have purchased this one from OC Cafe Racer off of Etsy, and I will provide links to everything that I've done to this bike below in the description. What's cool also about this bike is it does have dual motors. It has a front hub motor, and these are 1000 watt Bafang motors and it has a rear 1000 watt Bafang hub motor. I've added a few things. I've changed things around. One of the main things I did change is I did raise the headlight higher and that just is a little better. It gives you better visibility I think. It was pretty simple because the mounts are identical so I just flipped the mount upside down and it was perfect. Besides the dual motors what they do offer besides traction on loose sand and terrain is it really makes the bike accelerate up hills and flats a lot quicker. It basically takes half the weight off of the bike for the other motor so they work in tandem to provide a little faster acceleration. And that's good if you're carrying a second passenger or if you're going up hills. This bike also peaks out at 16 150 watts each motor and you can select the motors with the switch up here. If it's in the left position it is in rear wheel drive mode. The center position is both all wheel drive mode and the right position would be just front wheel drive mode. I like to start off in rear wheel drive mode and then to get a little more acceleration like a little turbo boost I'll use the all wheel drive mode. It can be a little tricky starting from a stop in all wheel drive because it does have a lot of torque and the front wheel will spin and it can lose grip and understeer. So I advise people to start out with the rear motor. It also comes with a really nice full color LCD display with a time, a voltage or battery percentage display. It also has the speed, the amount of wattage you're using, what pedal assist mode you're in. And it also has a trip meter with a lot of information like odometer, your range, and your current trip time, and the max speed, and your average speed. So what I did with this bike is it does come as a class two bike, and I unlocked it to a class three bike. And in New York State, that is the legal limit is a class three. So I'm fine here riding this bike without a license or any registration. The bike, Tops out at around 35 miles per hour on flat with me, my rider weight and size. It comes with these 
knobby CST 4 inch wide 20 inch diameter tires. It comes with a 7 sprocket rear and the shifter is similar to the Rad Power Bike. It's also a Shimano and this also comes with a throttle disable. 3D printed this to not accidentally disable or enable the throttle if it is pressed. This bike also does have hydraulic brakes and they are Tektro and what I did do is I did upgrade the front rotor to a 203 millimeter rotor and I use a Shimano adapter and that just allows a little more stopping power in the front because a lot of the weight goes to the front when you're stopping. The rear I kept the stock 180 millimeter rotor. I did wrap the bike with a black gloss 3M 2080 wrap. I covered up a lot of the silver sections and a lot of the red sections just for a cleaner look and I also did sand and spray the battery with a Rust-Oleum Painter's Touch satin black to cover up the logos but I did leave the 52 volt so it's a little visible in the light. Recently I picked up a 3D printer and I noticed or someone noticed when I was out riding that the front fender didn't really line up too well. The back was raised up more and the front was pointed down more. So what I did was I 3D printed this little 3D printed spacer and I do sell those on my online website and I will put a link to that product below in my description. And a prototype of what I also have is this top tube bag stabilizer. So it basically creates a flat platform for this top tube bag to sit on. The Grizzly comes with a rounded top tube, so a lot of the bags just don't really stay upright, and that's a common complaint. I also added this CD lock in the back. I got the dual pack model and I use these clamps that I use for my fishing rod holders on my Rad Rover which I will provide in the link below. The CD lock dual pack uses the same key for both these locks which is pretty neat so when I do lock it up I can use both the locks on two wheels or I can use it to extend the lock around like a telephone pole if one lock wasn't long enough. Uh, these locks I'm actually gonna try to 3D print a bottle holder a dual water bottle holder for this center area so I can relocate the, um, the locks and people can actually use the bike to hold um, two water bottles. So that's coming up and look for that in the store hopefully and if you guys want to purchase this stabilizer I will also put that product link below. I did also add the same bar extender on top. I did add an extra flashlight here because the stock headlight on the Grizzly is 500 lumens and although you are visible by other drivers it doesn't offer a very bright beam ahead for riding at 35 miles per hour at night so having an additional flashlight does help. I am probably going to look into getting an aftermarket 1000 lumen or so light and I will be probably trying to get something that is plug and play that runs off of this 52 volts. I also purchased this alarm horn off of Amazon and I mounted the button right here. It's very nice and easy and convenient to get to. It's a really loud horn so I'm not going to test it right now because we're inside and it does have a USB charging port below that you can close up so it's water resistant. This bike does have adjustable shocks in the front and in the back it has an air shock system and you can tighten up this coil with the spacer below and on to the main mod if you guys notice is I did change the handlebar so I did get a 31.8 diameter bar which is the same size as the stock bar but this is a 4 inch or 5 inch rise I think I did add this half any bar mirror on the end here for safety so I'll put the link to this bar I got off Amazon below I also did change the pedals to these pedals that I got off of Amazon that are nylon. I also did remove 
the pins just because I didn't want to ruin the bottom of any of my shoes if I wear nice shoes out. And overall, this bike is pretty awesome. I haven't had any issues with it yet, knock on wood. Um, I do want to change the tires as the next mod. I want to get something more street oriented. Um, these CST tires are pretty soft and they do wear quick. So I'll be looking at some upgraded tires for this unit. So if you want to pick up your own Aerial Rider Grizzly bike, check out their website. I'll put a link in the description below. And they have other bikes. They just released a Kepler 26 inch fat tire bike that looks really nice for fishing. They also have commuter bikes and they also have a X-Class and another all wheel drive model bike. So check out their website. You might see something that you want to pick up there. The Grizzly is an awesome bike once you mod it out, I think. Um, the stock handlebars are a little high for my liking, but overall the bike's really awesome. I haven't had any issues, knock on wood. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this overview of my Aerial Rider Grizzly. So if you guys enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you guys want to see more videos like this in the future, go ahead and subscribe to my channel. Comment below if you have any questions. And as always, thank you for watching.